I've got to be completely honest here. This is not a video I expected to do in any way, shape or form. But I'm going to be doing a full story look at N'Golo Kante for Manchester United. Where the stories started, where they've come from, are they reliable? Yes, they are. Are United really going to be looking at signing N'Golo Kante? Is he now still one of the best in the world? Is he going to be the midfielder that changes our defensive midfield that's been shit for so long? I'll run through everything in this video with you, and I want you to let me know in the comments, as you always do. If you do enjoy the video by the end of it, ladies and gents, please consider joining United People's TV and joining the community. It's growing. It's fantastic. I'd love you to be part of it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. But let me go back to where the first, I suppose, idea of N'Golo Kante leaving Chelsea came from. It was back in February when, of course, Declan Rice was linked with a move to Chelsea. Declan Rice, who's, I think, going to be priced out of a move from uh, West Ham this summer. I think he'll stay there. But uh, Joe Bernstein in the mail was saying, look, Maybe N'Golo Kante can be leaving because he hasn't been the the dominant player. I mean, he has when he's played, but N'Golo Kante had injury problems this year. Now, I could have first done an N'Golo Kante to United video a couple of weeks ago when Steve Bates from the people came out and said that Eric Ten Hag wants to sign N'Golo Kante. Ten Hag believes he still has the ability, experience and hunger to help him next season. And I was just like, it just confused me a little bit. I felt, is this really the sort of midfield signing we need to be making? We need to be looking towards, in my opinion, uh, players in the region of like 21 to 25, rather than someone like Kante, who's 31. But then the stories have really developed since then, when you've got Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic saying that Manchester United are considering a move for him, expected to be made available for a reduced price due to his contract expiring in 12 months, and Tuchel's desire to freshen up a Chelsea midfield. We heard over here, and this is what the article in The Athletic actually says. It says, look, they're talking about Declan Rice and West Ham's resistance. Is in that context that a move for N'Golo Kante is being considered. Kante's Chelsea future is uncertain. And then Jacob uh, Steinberg from The Guardian followed it up, saying Manchester United are considering a bid for Chelsea's N'Golo Kante. Let's go down and read a little bit more about what the article says. He said, Manchester United are interested in signing Kante. His contract expires. At the moment, it seems unlikely Chelsea would be willing to sell. Kante's been a crucial player, but of course that injury record that happened last year, that's giving credence to the idea that Chelsea would let Kante go. Now, first and foremost, I want you to let me know what you think about this in the, in the, in the comments. It's an odd one. It really is an odd one. Kante, I think, pff, it may well be the best signing that's happened in the Premier best. Signing the Premier League has had in the last 10 years in terms of the success he had at Leicester, success he had at Chelsea and the success he's had at France and the play he's grown into and the influence he's had in the Premier League has almost been unrivaled. But is he really going to be the midfielder that Manchester United need to take our club forward? Questionable. If you were to look at his injury record, of course, last year was where it sort of kicked in. A groin injury, had COVID a couple of times, some knee problems. He missed quite a few games for Chelsea. And they definitely missed him. But nobody can argue against N'Golo Kante's CV. Holding the World Cup there. Holding the Premier League with Leicester. Holding the Champions League and the Premier League with Chelsea. There aren't many players who have been as successful as he is. And in his position, I think he was the best player in the world. Unrivaled. No one even slightly close. But like a good four ish year, four or five years, there or thereabouts. But I question whether he would be the right signing for Manchester United. And, and the thing I find strange about these Kante rumours is that they are strange. We look at all the players that we've been linked with. John McGinn snuck his way in on the end there, but um, uh, Calvin Phillips, Declan Rice, Ruben Neves, Amadou Haidara, Jude Bellingham, not particularly a central midfielder, already in two many. We've been linked with so many midfielders. And N'Golo Kante's name's never really been part of that. That because we thought, I don't know, that N'Golo Kante would never leave Chelsea. Is it because we thought we need to be looking younger? I find it very, as I said, odd. And from, there's one thing that I can't really ignore. In my opinion, it's the elephant in the room. When we signed Matic from Chelsea, they were happy to let Matic go. We got a year, a couple of good years, a year or two good years out of uh, Matic. And then we were stuck with a player who's only leaving now. Who, in my opinion, has already 
probably been past his best sell-by date by a couple of seasons. Do you think that N'Golo Kante would fall into that category? Or is that unfair to make that comparison? Do you... This, this is where the line needs to be drawn. And this is why I think the comments on this video are going to be so, so split. And I'll be honest, I'm split in my mind. On the one hand, I look at Kante and think, you know what? He may be 31, but I'm... is there anybody who's ever had a better engine than him in the Premier League? His, his energy levels are relentless. He was a central figure. Not just literally, but a central figure for Chelsea winning the Champions League only last season. Is he really past it? Or is he one of those players who, maybe between the years of 31 to 33, can really have another renaissance? It's not even a renaissance. As I said, it was only last season where he was one of the best in the world. I don't know. I just find it odd. There is no doubting whatsoever, right? When you take a look at this, you look at Manchester United starting 11, and you simply do a bit of that. That upgrade is incredible. And if you think about who we could be partnered with now, again, this is all completely hypothetical at the moment. But a midfield of Kante and De Jong upgraded from McTominay and Fred. That's uncomparable. Absolute incomparable. Incompar absolutely incomparable. But it's whether or not you think that Kante could be that Kante. Obviously, that's a good few years ago, so it won't be that exact one. But it's whether or not you feel like he would turn into another Matic-type signing or whether it would be maybe a smart and shrewd choice for Manchester United to go and get Kante. And I think the big thing here, right, because as has been reported by, as I said, uh, The Guardian, by uh, The Athletic here, Manchester United are definitely considering making a bid for him. How much do you think that bid would be? There's no mention of any price anywhere. Now, Kante's uh, contract expires at the end of next season. So if Chelsea were to get some money for him, this is the only summer they can do that. So would they want to cash in on him? But what sort of... They're, they're my two questions that I want you to answer in the comments. Number one, what sort of Kante, version of Kante do you think United would sign if we signed him? Would we sign that prime Kante who would refine his form? He would re... His injury problems wouldn't be too much of a concern. Or do you think that we would sign that player there who missed quite a few games in that Chelsea team, was in and out, wasn't the sort of player that he was once upon a time? Because I'm really torn on this one. Because part of me really feels, Sam, this, it's these exact sort of signings that you've been shouting about that we need to move away from. Players who are like 30, 31, players in the twilight of their careers, players who... They, you might get a year or good, a year or two good out of them, but realistically, his prime is past him. Realistically, the Kante that tore the, that tore everything up, that sort of set a new standard for that role, he's now gone. But then, when you just take a look at, I suppose this is how bad Manchester United's uh, midfield is. Whether or not Dion comes in, that's irrelevant. I su well, not irrelevant, completely opposite of irrelevant. But if I put Fred in there for the time being. Even Kante and Fred would be an incredible upgrade on a very, <laughs> a, a midfield which is, let's be honest, lacking a dynamic side with, Kat, with Fred and McTominay. It depends on what I suppose the purpose of Kante is. Maybe Kante will come into Manchester United this summer to allow us to then move for Declan Rice next summer. Because I think Declan Rice has always pretty much been the top choice. Ruben Neves, I'd love to sign him. I would definitely choose Ruben Neves over Kante if I was given the choice uh, because I think of the longevity of it all. But what do you make of this Kante story? As I, I did not expect to, to do a video on it. I really, really did not. Uh, of all the midfielders that we've been linked with, the Kante conversation never, never really came up. But now that it's been, as I said, it's been covered. I'll run through these again. It's been covered by Joe Bernstein in the mail back in February. It was linked anyway. Then Steve Bates popped up in May, heavily linking to us. And then, of course, Laurie Whitwell's come now. And so has Jacob Steinberg from The Guardian. What do you make of it? Kante, for a year or two, for maybe 20 to 30 million pounds, is that a really smart signing for Manchester United that maybe will give us the opportunity to then go hard and big for Declan Rice next summer? Or is signing someone like N'Golo Kante now going to be just a risk? And that we should be looking at someone younger, of course, I think we've been outpriced for Aurelian Chouameni. That Calvin Phillips, I don't think he was ever really an option. I think he's 
because of the Leeds connection. I do think that would stop him. Amadou Hardara, we've heard nothing of that. Let me know what you think about Kente in the comments below. Do you think it would be a good, smart, short-term signing? Or would it end up being like another Schweinsteiger? Maybe a Hargreaves. Maybe a Matic. And in terms of the long-term rebuild of the club, is that the right thing for United to do? You let me know what you think in the comments because I think this is really, really going to split opinions of United fans. Because if that Kante came in, that top-level Kante, he could still be an incredible player for us. It's just whether or not you think that would happen. Let me know what you think.